Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today, Monday, December 7th, 2020. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show. We also give you daily stock ideas to consider. It hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Let's dig in. U.S. equities finished higher on Friday as major indices put in another week of solid gains. All four, Dow, S&P, Russell 2000, and the NAS closed at record highs. Value outperformed growth with energy materials and industrials among the leaders. Tech beat the tape, but consumer discretionary and comm services uh, were laggards. <clears throat> Treasuries were mostly weaker, led by the long end of the curve. So continuation of that curve steepening. Dollar was better against the yen and euro. Gold finished down 10 basis points. WTI crude continued to grind higher, uh, up 1.5% or so on Friday. Now, as we get to the desk this morning, a uh, little bit of a pullback underway. S&P futures uh, down 40 basis points after that strong move to the upside last week. Asian equities were mixed overnight. Hong Kong, the worst performer, was down over a percent. Japan and China also lag. European markets are weaker. Treasuries are bid with some curve flattening following that bear steepener uh, last week that we talked about day in and day out. Dollar is better against the yen and euro. Sterling weakness, probably the biggest story in the FX market right now uh, on lack of a Brexit deal. Gold is off 10 basis points. WTI crude giving some back down 80 bips to kick it off on a Monday morning. That starts out, as I said, with all the majors and the Dow makes four. I don't have the Dow on here. I'm just going to run out of room on the charts at this point. Uh, but all of the major ETFs and I, sacrilege that it is, I don't consider the Dow a major ETF. Uh, it's 30 stocks, okay? The, the market is so much bigger than that at this stage of the game. In my opinion, I realize that I might be upsetting some people, uh, but I don't care. I keep it real. Uh, IWM continued to power higher after a short consolidation. The Qs have broken out. And the S&P 500, same story here. For the SPY, support at 360, then 340. Qs, 260 is key support. 280 is important in the near term. And we've been hammering home the point on the IWM. Local support near 170, then 160 below that. I continue with the view uh, on SPY that above 340, there's potential upside to 413. I think that that will likely, uh, that's the roadmap to follow, in my opinion. Uh, you three Above 340, that's the solid support level. That's the breakout above the February highs pre-COVID. You know, if we're above that, we're kind of in the middle of the consolidation zone here. You're playing for further upside. Below that, the story gets a little bit more murky. Um, weight of the evidence supports a continuation of the trend to the upside. Really, as we've been saying, the only pushback right now that I can find is sentiment is just, it's frothy. There's no two ways about it. I can't sugarcoat it. Um, everybody's bullish, right? To, to sit here and say that we're bullish, <clears throat> is no longer non-consensus. Uh, I know a lot of, you know, through the choppiness, a lot of people were looking for us to start to roll over and we kept saying, nope, let's, let's position for upside. Um, everybody's bullish now. And that's kind of the one knock that we have. That can continue to work as long as we continue to get surprises to the upside. Uh, but to me, I view it as it sets the stage for potential pullbacks within the context of the uptrend that can be used to add and or add exposure to the portfolio or upgrade to higher quality names. Let's take a look at the market in a minute now. What are we writing about today? Well, major ETFs traded all-time highs as the bull run grinds higher. I think I hammered home that point just a second ago. Gold holds key support. We'll look at that. Crude oil uh, builds on recent strength and odds favor a continuation higher. Dollar remains under pressure. Uh, oversold in the near term, however. And futures, as I said, point to a lower open today. I apologize. We're not going to look at gold in the charts today. Uh, if you want to see what my thoughts on gold, um, you should read my note. Major indices from a power bar perspective. Dow added 84 basis points on Friday to continue to pitch a shutout. Four nothing bulls to bears there. S&P 500, a like amount, up 84 bips, 125 to 38 bulls to bears there. So we're solidly bullish. NASDAQ, 
underperformer, 16 to nine bulls to bears, small caps rip higher. Those of you who have been following along at home know that you've seen this progression over time. So you should not be surprised at this point by small cap outperformance. 820 to 150 bulls to bears. Bonds down tick, sending yields higher. We're going to take a look at yields, especially the 10 year. Energy, uh, top of the list once again. Two to one bulls to bears, but look at that move in energy on Friday, up nearly five and a half percent. Hopefully, you all have been following along, right, as we have become progressively less bearish and actually started to point out some bullish opportunities within the energy complex. According to the Chicken Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks strongly bullish. Major indexes are mixed. It's at our stock of the day today, Manitowoc, a machinery stock. Um, has that look that I've been seeing uh, and that I like and that I want to take advantage of. Manitowoc has a very bullish rating, strong trend, strong industry group. And that look that I'm talking about is the downtrend, the consolidation, the interim rally to make a June high the pullback, and then a rally again. And I see a lot of stocks that are on the verge of breaking this interim June high or have already done so. That in and of itself is interesting. But what I'm in particularly looking for is then also looking for that personality change where not only are we on the verge of breaking that June high or slightly above it already, but beginning to outperform. So Manitowoc starting to look like that. We have a very bullish stock beginning to outperform its oversold bullish money flow on the verge of changing this trend, right? Down, sideways, potentially up. I want to take advantage of that. I think that makes a ton of sense. Take a look at a name like Manitowoc MTW here. Closed at 1238 on Friday, up 8.7%. So a solid move to the upside. Actually triggered one of our buy signals today, the relative strength breakout signal. Uh, that's a call to attention. I think that if you're looking for new names, Manitowoc is one that you should make yourself familiar with. Read up on them. What do they do? Is there an opportunity? I think there is. I'm going to dig into it myself. I'm highlighting it here today. Taking a look at the sector tracker now, moving into the last five days for the major sectors. Uh, energy top of the list. And I mean, listen, if you've been following, you've, you've heard us call out energy as the best performing sector. I don't even know how many times now over the past few days. Starting to get a little bit near term overbought. Sure, maybe. But potential, I mean, it's been such a laggard for so long. I think it'd be crazy not to be paying attention to the space. Healthcare, tech, and comms round out the top four. Fins, REITs, staples, middle of the road, all green. Industrials and materials starting to perk up a little bit again. Discretionary and utes at the bottom of the list. So we have utilities lagging. That's good. I mean, traditionally defensive sector at the bottom of the list. In a bull market, that's what we want to see. Taking a look at the industry in focus now, home builder services. And this is an interesting one. Uh, because I think that there's a lot of confusion between a couple of the ETFs that track this space. XHB uh, really tracks the entire supply chain. So not just the home builders, but you know Home Depot, Lowe's, Whirlpool, Mohawk, right? Essentially the whole, the whole supply chain, right? The, the housing supply chain, if you will. Uh, it's, so it's a different animal than the ETF that we looked at last week, which was ITB, which was purely home construction, which is starting to roll over. Uh, on a relative basis. So absolute relative, important. ITB, we we looked at the chart last week, consolidation, but lagging. XHB, different animal, has some different names in there. And those different names are actually what's helping. So over the past six months, it's outperformed by 10.2%. Still has a bullish ratio at 13 to one. Number six of 21 subsectors having moved down four slots, MNI Homes, MHO, Taylor Morrison, TMHC, and Century Community, CCS, all with very bullish ratings, all in a fund that looks like this, continuing to grind higher, though uh, certainly some stalling momentum here in the near term. Bullish, strong trend, right? 13 to one, we talked about it. Uh, But remember when we looked at ITB last week, ITB was beginning to lag. This was below spot five, right? Sign of underperformance. Uh, This group here is being helped by those other areas away from the actual home construction stock. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic 
Uh, one we want to take advantage of if it presents itself. Uh, but right now I see lagging relative strength. So I'm not super excited about the space until I see a pickup in the relative strength. Taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's movers and shakers or Friday's movers and shakers. Apologize. I do that every Monday. Uh, leaders and laggers, gainers and losers. Uh, leader side of the board had one thing in common, and you should be able to see what it is. Uh, it's energy, Oxy, FANG, APA, EOG, and FTI, uh, all up uh, 9 to 13%. Uh, across the board, not a ton company specific going on. I mean, there's just a rotation into this group right now. It's under owned. We talked about it. It's maybe 2% of the S and P 500. It's universally hated. It's consensus to think that with president elect Biden uh, getting ready to take over that the clean tech uh, trade is, is the one to put on, but we all know that markets are discounting mechanisms. I mean, if you're buying tan now and your thesis is, a, a Joe Biden presidency, I'd say maybe that's probably not the best thesis. Uh, not so much because it's not right, so much that it's probably priced in already. Um, I think that there are actually interesting dynamics at play that could make energy an interesting place to be based on Joe, a Joe Biden presidency. So that's kind of interesting as well. So uh, they are the leader side of the board right now. Uh, losers, Ulta, earnings, um, Lawsuit settlement for D, uh, market access, some trading volumes reported, but that was back on the second. Not sure that that was impactful on Friday. Um, exchange offer out of SRE and PHM, kind of interesting. So here's Pulte, right? PHM is one of those names that is more of the home construction, uh, down 2.5%, uh, even though they increased their dividends. So that was kind of interesting. Let's dig into the charts now. I think what's hurting the actual construction companies, the home construction companies is this chart right here. This is the 10 year. This is the 10 year grinding back towards 1%. This is the 10 year above its 50 and 200 day moving averages with the 50 day having recently crossed above. This is the 10 year with RSI shifting to bullish ranges. For those of you who read my market survival guide, you know, we've cooled on treasuries. We cooled on treasuries a long time ago. Uh, this chart grinding higher. Uh, showing us that uh, we were right in that call. Um, maybe we'll continue to be right. And weight of the evidence supports higher. The, the question is, how high will the Fed let it go? What's interesting is at 9.6%, 9.7, I mean, 97 basis points, not 9.7%, 97 basis points, we could essentially double and be back to where we were pre-COVID. Is that where the Fed is that where the Fed steps in? I don't know. I have no idea. And I'm not going to get into the game theory of how high will the Fed let the 10 year go. Uh, it's not what I do. Uh, what I see is the potential for them to go higher, uh, at which point they will they could run into a resistance zone, right? And then we'll evaluate the situation. But Remember, for those of you who have been following me for a long time, you know I have this view, right? Because I have an inflation view. So with an inherent with an inflation view is rising rates. Um, we shifted from one of stagflation to one of, if you go look, remember Friday, we looked at the copper gold ratio, right? And growth is getting better in the market as well. So we went from, you know, kind of a stagflationary type view to one that's more reflationary. Uh, and it's playing out. If you're following along at home, the themes have been playing out. So... Uh, hopefully you've been taking advantage of it, the roadmaps that we've been laying out. But I do think there's scope for rates to go higher, right? Obviously, the next stop would be somewhere around here, one, two, one, three. Uh, but just think about this. We could get to one, eight to two and simply just be back to where we were pre-COVID. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the, the wild card is obviously the Fed and whether or not they'll let that happen. Uh, with, with that, uh, gold is... I mean, uh, the dollar is just completely falling out of bed. Now, we've been saying for a while, follow the dollar if you want to follow risk assets because of the inverse correlation. You had your dollar breakdown, uh, right, as we said, odds favor and upside continuation uh, to the bull run in equities. So hopefully you took advantage of that. Right now, we're oversold on the dollar here in the near term. For those of you who look at candles, you know, a little bit of a doji pattern playing out uh, on Friday. Uh, so something to keep an eye on. And then finally, I do think oil has room to run, right? So as we think about energy, I think oil has, has, has room to run to about $60 in the near term. Uh, and that should play out with energy, can, you know, as energy is turning the corner. 
on a relative basis. So that'll wrap us up on a Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Take us for a test drive. Chakenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'm back tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.